The Roaring Twenties in America represented a golden era of American industry. Business was booming and technological breakthroughs meant there was seemingly no limit to what man could achieve if he put his mind to it. Margaret Bork White became fascinated with this new age and particularly its aesthetics. She once wrote, To me, industrial forms were all the more beautiful because they were never designed to be beautiful. They had a simplicity of line that came from their direct application of purpose. As a result, she set her mind on photographing this new age of American industry. The young photographer's interest was similar to a group of painters known as the Precisionism Group. The movement, influenced by Cubism and Futurism, celebrated this new American landscape of skyscrapers, bridges, and factories. Margaret Bork White became a pioneer in industrial photography, working for clients such as the Otis Steel Mill, and even developed new techniques to photograph some of the processes hard to capture on film. She also became gradually more famous to the public over this period, fascinated at the lengths she would go to make a photograph. In 1930, a new magazine, Fortune, approached Margaret Bork White and offered her $12,000 a year for a part-time contract. One of her first assignments, photographing the construction of the Chrysler skyscraper, at that point the tallest building in the world. She was immediately smitten with the skyscraper, particularly the massive eagle head figures projecting off of the building's 61st floor, a modern rendition of the gargoyles of Notre Dame. At first reluctant to move to New York City from Cleveland, she decided not only that she would make the move, but that it would be in the Chrysler building itself where she would open her studio. As a result, the building not only became her place of work, but a central focal point for much of her photography. Over these years, Margaret's fame also continued to grow, and in a 1935 poll, she was named one of the 20 most notable women. In 1930, while working in Germany, Margaret Bork White was able to obtain permission to enter Soviet Russia to photograph Moscow's factories. This marked the first time a Western photographer was allowed inside the Soviet Union. She traveled there twice, in the summers between 1930 and 1932, documenting USSR's first five-year plan. Her photographs from the trip were first published in Fortune magazine in 1931, under the title Eyes on Russia, and then later as a book by the same name. While in Russia on these trips though, a shift in Margaret's photography began to take place as she began to move away from machinery and towards people. These people included notable figures such as Joseph Stalin himself and his mother, as well as the everyday people of Russia. She found that she was not emotionally equipped to deal with the change. She vowed from then on, for the rest of my life I would undertake only those photographic assignments which I felt could be done in a creative and constructive way realization marked a shift in her career towards more social documentary. 